Folks, we're going to get started again. Our next speaker is Dr. Mario Inchiosa, and he's going to talk to us about a particular topic of great interest to me, which is scaling R to big data science. There was a couple conversations on R and its use in big data analytics yesterday, and this is a perfectly uh, apropos topic to hear about. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm a U.S. Chief Scientist of Revolution Analytics, and uh, as you heard, we're going to be talking about scaling R, the uh, open source language, to big data science. So our company, Revolution Analytics, is the leading provider of advanced analytics and software services specifically based on open source R, and our product, Revolution R Enterprise, is a big data, big analytics platform based on R. Um, we were very happy this year to be honored by Gartner as one of two visionaries in advanced analytics for 2014. So we've heard about some of the big data challenges and in very interesting uh, talks earlier this morning. Um, we know that there are many new data sources, which leads to greater volume, variety, and velocity of data, as well as veracity. And with such large amounts of data, we um, now have the challenge of uh, do we process the, do we move the data from a storage platform to an analysis platform, or do we um, try to avoid moving the data and process it in, in place in the, um, in the platform where it's mainly stored? Um, also, uh, we have the issue of memory limits. With bigger and bigger data, is it all going to fit into memory as is required by some analysis uh, software? Uh, so that becomes a challenge. Um, we also find that we're doing more and more complex computations. It's no longer averages and minimums and maximums, but we're running uh, regression on big data. We're parallelizing it so we can process it in the required amount of time. Uh, we might have iterative loops of experimentation with the data. Uh, we find often we want to combine models, use ensemble modeling to find the best of a committee of models. Um, and we may be dealing with producing thousands of individual small models, say for each SKU in a product line or each store in a, in a large chain of stores. Um, finally, we might want to do simulation to see what range of outcomes we see. So increasingly, it's a complex computation. We don't want to reinvent the wheel every time we want to perform, say, a regression. Um, another big challenge uh, that enterprises have is a heterogeneous landscape. It's no longer just an enterprise data warehouse. It's now perhaps a data lake in Hadoop. They might also use um, uh, MPI-based clusters. Um, there, there are quite a few different platforms. And finding people with the skills for all of these platforms is a huge challenge. So what would be great is a solution where you can write your script once and have it run on a variety of different platforms without having to rewrite it in a different language with different APIs for each platform. And certainly enterprises need production level support. They um, uh, find a lot of benefits in adopting open source software, but without uh, someone you can call when uh, there's a problem, you, you really um, might have a big impact on production. Finally, our customers um, and those big data users are finding that efficiency is very important. With more data, we have more volume, of, we have more models, we have more variables in those models, which results in a longer end-to-end -end cycle time for the models, but the models at the same time have a shorter shelf life because we're, not, we're using um, big data not only for uh, long-term strategic planning, but also for short-term tactical decisions. And, um, Having the best models is now becoming a competitive advantage, so you do not want to be using a model that's based on data from weeks or months ago. So, um, as I mentioned, we're built on open source R, and we're a proud supporter of the R community, which is a really thriving open source community. Uh, we support over 50 meetups around the world in R, and we support their user, uh, the R user group meeting um, at, which is annually, it's taking place in LA in a couple of months this year. So in case you're not so familiar with R, R is now the most widely used data analysis software used by over two million data scientists. It's a very powerful uh, programming language and very extensible. It can be used to create uh, amazing visualizations. New York Times and Twitter use it for very customized visualizations 
has a very thriving open source community, often the latest anal um, analytics research uh, is uh, instantiated as an R package that other researchers and, um, and uh, business people can download and use within R. And finally, R helps to fill this talent gap because uh, being open source software, a lot of our students are learning it in um, university and they would like to continue to use R when they go into the uh, business world, into enterprises. In fact, we're seeing such an exploding growth in demand for R that R is now the highest paid IT skill as of a DICE survey uh, from January of this year. It's also the most used data science language after SQL and it's being used by currently by 70% of data miners. So really it is taking the world by storm, this open source project. Uh, now what is our product, Revolution R Enterprise? Well, what we do is we take open source R and we help to make it high performance and scalable, make it portable across enterprise platforms and make it easier to build uh, your R scripts and to deploy those analytics within an enterprise. Some of the ways in which we uh, build upon open source R, um, a lot of the core routines in open source R, um, such as a linear regression in open source R, are memory bound. They assume that all the data will fit in memory, which is fine if you're working with a limited amount of data on your laptop, but it's not so good when you have a huge amount of data in a, in a clustered system. So that's where we add um, functions that will handle the distributed uh, case where you have memory uh, that is uh, data that's too large to fit in memory. Um, also, the core functions in R are single threaded or um, have the ability to parallelize matrix operations but not the whole algorithm. In Revolution R Enterprise, we've added uh, parallel threading to uh, fully support multi-core processors. And uh, as far as enterprise readiness goes, we've talked about the support question. In R, you have very good support from the open source community, but when you're working in an enterprise, you really do want a commercially supported um, distribution, which we provide. And finally, um, R has now over 5,000 very high quality packages that have been added by the community to extend R's functionality. And we can leverage all of those, pro uh, all of those packages, but allow them to run um, across the nodes of large clustered systems. So uh, I'll give you a little tour through the, um, through the various aspects of the R Revolution R Enterprise product. And I'll start with um, our foundation, which is open source R, plus a selection of these, uh, the most useful of these contributed packages from CRAN, the Comprehensive R Archive Network. So we're building on that foundation, we take the source code and we recompile it, linking it with the Intel math kernel libraries. And that um, speeds up processing of any matrix operations within R, whether we wrote those operations or other people wrote those operations. The math kernel library uh, will be called, and that can result in anywhere from a three to 50x speed improvement um, just by uh, having that linking. Now, you could download open source R yourself and you can link it with, um, with uh, uh, these basic linear algebra subroutines, but it, we've already downloaded it for you, we've already compiled it, and sometimes that is a little bit of a barrier to entry. So um, this is kind of at the base that we build on. The next step is um, we add uh, a de an integrated development environment that allows you to have a very nice debugging experience um, creating your R scripts. And uh, that's what we call develop R. And um, we've also created something called deploy R, which is a web services SDK that allows you to integrate R within your enterprise. So it implements web service APIs um, allowing R to be um, called by other app enterprise applications and by um, web-based applications. And finally, I'm going to fo focus mostly on um, the routines that give us the scalable analytics. And those are these three boxes here, the scale R, which is our scalable routines, uh, connect R, our set of um, functions that allow the scalable routines to work with data from a variety of data sources, and distribute R, which allows these scalable algorithms to run across a variety of distributed platforms. Now, to give you an idea of how these scalable algorithms work, they're all what are known as chunking algorithms. 
they will process the data a chunk at a time, uh, only bringing in um, uh, a subset of the data into memory at any one time. So uh, we parallelize over nodes and cores, and each thread will process one chunk of the data and produce an intermediate result object. Then those intermediate result objects will be combined within the node, and then the results, intermediate results from the nodes will be combined and um, provide to a master process, which will either return the result to the user's R session, or if it's an iterative algorithm, the master process will use the results of one iteration to uh, either decide whether you've converged or to set up an, a, a second or uh, further iterations of the algorithm. So that basically is a, uh, what we call our parallel external memory algorithm, or PIMA. Um, this is the chunking algorithm. And basically, to implement one of these PIMAs, we have to write um, four functions, an initialize function, a process chunk function, which is somewhat like a map function in Hadoop MapReduce, an aggregate function, which is similar to a reduce function in MapReduce, and a finalize function. So we've written all of our parallel algorithms in terms of these four functions. And by using this approach, that gives us the chunking um, property, that gives us linear scalability as the number of rows of data increases, and the ability to process an unlimited number of rows of data in a fixed amount of RAM. And because we wrote the, we extract, kind of abstracted the algorithms into these four functions, we have a, um, an implementation that will work in a variety of compute contexts, different numbers of cores, um, different distributed computing platforms, uh, very portable. And uh, we've also abstracted the um, functions for accessing the data so that we work with a variety of data sources, always using the same um, uh, algorithms and getting the same results. So this gives us a write once to play anywhere capability and it means that you can write a script maybe on your desktop, uh, um, test it on a workstation or server, and then you can change one line in the script and tell it that you want it to run not on your desktop anymore, but you want it to run against data that's in your Hadoop cluster or in your electronic data warehouse or maybe on your um, MPI based cluster. Uh, and now we have even added Amazon AWS, so you can use it, and it um, you can try it and you can use it at an hourly rate. You don't have to make any uh, big upfront pur purchase and it will run in the cloud on Amazon. So um, as I mentioned, the chunking algorithms allow us to work with a large number, of, uh, in, uh, arbitrarily, arbitrarily large number of rows in a fixed amount of memory. And they also allow us to scale linearly with the number of rows and nodes and to scale well with the number of cores and number of parameters. So uh, let's get an idea of what the performance actually looks like. And in this chart, I'm showing you the performance on a single node. Um, and the horizontal axis is number of rows of data. So we're increasing the number of rows of data. The vertical axis is the time to complete this model building function, which is a generalized linear model. Um, and I'm comparing um, uh, in blue the GLM function, generalized linear model function that's provided with open source R. It's a very nice, robust uh, implementation, but it was not designed for um, unlimited amounts of data and, 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 and was not designed to make use of multiple cores. So you see that the, 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 the blue line rises rather rapidly uh, as you increase the number of rows. And it, and it stops there, it kind of runs out of steam um, in, on this, uh, I think it was a, um, an eight gigabyte um, machine. It kind of ran, ran out of memory uh, uh, somewhere below 500,000 um, rows. Uh, in contrast, our algorithm that is running the chunking algorithm and using all of the cores of the, um, this uh, four core uh, machine um, is shown by the red line. We're seeing um, much faster performance and much more scalable performance. This chart shows uh, results out to five million rows, but you could literally go to over a billion rows on um, a single node machine like this and see very good performance using the uh, GLM function that um, is included with Revolution R Enterprise. Another scalability um, chart now, instead of looking at number of rows, we're looking at number of nodes. We're adding more nodes into our cluster, going from a one node, um, one node 
to five nodes, and we're actually seeing a speed up of 9x by going to five nodes, which is a super linear speed up, and that's because when we um, add nodes, we're also adding memory, and although we don't require the data to fit in memory, um, data is cached in memory, and on iterative algorithms such as logistic regression, which is shown here, um, if data if you have more aggregate memory in your cluster, more of the data will be cached and you'll save time the second and third and fourth time you have to go back to your data. So that shows their excellent scaling with increasing number of nodes. One final comparison um, with an even larger data set. This was a logistic regression performed on a billion rows of data and um, SAS published a benchmark where they were uh, able to complete the logistic regression in 80 seconds, uh, working with data that's, that had been preloaded into memory. Um, that was run on a rather large system with 32 nodes um, and 384 cores and a total of 1.5 terabytes of RAM uh, because the data in this case did have to fit in memory. Um, we decided to see how uh, Revolution R Enterprise would uh, perform on a similar benchmark. So we created a billion rows of data um, ran it on our small five node cluster with 80 gigabytes of RAM and we're very pleased to see that uh, even reading the data from disk, we were able to get an excellent speed of 44 seconds. So um, we did very well in absolute terms and in relative terms, we, we were beating the SAS benchmark with a fraction of the amount of hardware. Uh, little cost savings is, is, uh, is, a, vis is, a, is a viable there. Um, so how do we get such great speed? Well, I don't have time to go into a lot of detail, but um, partially uh, through efficient algorithms. Um, we use, uh, we've written the core of these functions in C++, so the R package then calls C++ functions, which uh, use templates for, um, for uh, great efficiency. And we have a um, very efficient file format for storing the data. We can read from databases and text files, flat files, but we also can import data into a binary file format we call XDF, which allows very fast access. And uh, so now that I've told you a bit about our, our platform, I'll just wrap up by, by briefly uh, describing the, the range of functions we offer. Um, we start with uh, data preparation functions like the data step function, which allows you to um, transform your variables or create new variables, recode variables, um, and, uh, and uh, import from other file formats like SAS and SPSS or ODBC for databases. Then we have our descriptive statistics allowing you to compute things like minimum, maximum, and mean. And then importantly, we have big data versions of median and quantiles uh, which parallelize. Um, then we have statistical tests, sampling, and uh, finally we get into the more um, sophisticated predictive statistical modeling um, for big data, including various forms of regression, linear regression, generalized linear models, and logistic regression, which is really popular for classification. Um, we also support classification and regression trees and forests in big data. Uh, we support visualization uh, use, uh, via histograms. Histograms are a really good way to get a summary of an arbitrarily large amount of data. Um, rock curves are, are essential for determining whether your model is really good at predicting um, uh, on data that it hasn't seen before. And um, finally, when you have many, many variables, you may not want to use all the variables in the model. So we have variable selection routines such as stepwise uh, regression. Um, and we do have the ability to run simulations, uh, Monte Carlo simulations using independent streams of parallel, uh, parallel streams of random numbers. And um, within these simulations, um, you're not restricted to our, the functions that we've parallelized. Within a simulation, you can actually use any open source R function or any open source R package and have it run in parallel across your, 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 your cluster or, or um, or parallel uh, computation system. And then finally, we offer machine learning algorithms like k-means clustering, and um, I've mentioned the decision trees already. And we do, for, um, for interoperation interoper with uh, scoring engines, we offer PMML export. PMML is the predictive modeling markup language. 
So that concludes my uh, very brief introduction to revolutionary enterprise and how it scales to big data. Uh, if you'd like to hear more, we are giving a one and a half hour tutorial at this conference on Saturday at 4.30 p.m. Thank you.